Hi everybody, Diana here at Sew in Common. Welcome to Quilt Lab. This week in Quilt Lab, we're gonna talk about how to resize and quilt in the hoop. Specifically in regard to our current project block, the bento box and the runner that we're making. But the information I'm gonna share with you today can be used for any pattern for any quilted project that you're making really. So if you're getting ready to quilt a big quilt, you can use this information. Or if you've got another project you wanna use, you can use this information for that as well as our bento box stained glass runner that we've been working on. So again, welcome in everybody. So glad to have you on this Sunday. Um, one of the things I'm gonna do for you today is show you the layout for this bento box stained glass runner. Mine is not quite finished yet. It's been a crazy week, um, but I've got blocks and, and I'll, I'll tell you about that. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you aren't quite finished because <laughs> I know some of you are in Wednesday workshop and here and you were telling me you weren't quite sure how you were gonna get it all done. Don't worry about it. It's not a race, right? We'll get it there. Um, you'll see mine next week. I'll show you my finished one next week, my finished top next week. Whether it's quilted, I don't know, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So um, this again is the bento box. This is another finished one I have. This was another finished one. I have several that are over on my design board that I started laying out. So I didn't want to bring them all down and get myself confused on that. You guys know I get confused. But I will show you. I've got this, this many more. I've got four more to stitch together. And then I'll be ready to do the whole, finish the whole top and get it quilted. But today I want to show you the layout. And then we're going to talk about quilting designs and how to resize them. Because I've been getting some questions from some of you. Um, some of you that have been quilting for a long time, but just now starting to use your embroidery machine to do your finished quilting. And from some of you that are brand new to this whole process. So I want to give you the best tools and the best information I can. And I have a really super tool to share with you today that is free. We love free, right? Of course we do. Alrighty. So, um, oh, also, huh, happy, where did I set it? There it is. Happy National Lego Day. Did you guys know it was a Lego Day? It is. You guys know Legos, right? These little plastic blocks that have the holes in them and you stick them together. Back when I was a kid and Legos first came here to America, all there were were blocks. That was it. I didn't have any, but I have a cousin who's close to my age. He had tons of them. I was always so jealous. We lived in Illinois, they lived in Tennessee. So whenever we went to visit, which unfortunately wasn't nearly enough for my in my thoughts. Whereas I know my mother's side of the family super duper well. I never got to spend that much time with my dad's family. And I hate that. I love them all so dearly. And I would love to see them more and know them more and all of that. But, you know, sometimes that's how families are. But anyway, my cousin and I would play with his Legos and they were just the blocks. So it was purely your imagination what you could come up with. Well, now they have things like this cute little now, this is not a Lego branded product. I'll tell you about this in a minute. But Legos come in so many, you can build buildings. They've got like a Taj Mahal. They've got the Space Needle. They've got the Space Lab. They've got all these like floral arrangements that look like real flowers. Oh my goodness, they're incredible. Um, and lest you think Legos are for kids, I know more adults that collect Legos than kids that collect Legos. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of my very best friends in this world collects Legos. And every time I see these big, beautiful sets, I wish I had a spare several hundred dollars and I would just send them to her because I know she would love them. Um, but this is not a Lego branded product. This is from a little company, I think out in Utah, because this was a product that um, my girlfriend's quilt shop out in Utah sold a few years ago and it came with, do I have my little, yeah, here she is with a little figure holding her scissors, right? I think this is supposed to be Chris. If you know my girlfriend's quilt shop, you know, it's owned by Chris Thurgood and she is the twin sister of Kim Christopherson from Kimber Bell. Um, both lovely, lovely ladies. Um, I truly love them to pieces. And um, this was a set they sold. Check out their website. 
uh, my my girlfriend's quilt shop and shop is with two P's and an E at the end. They might still have them. I don't know. But um, I love mine. It sits there. I look at it all the time. I wish this little piece here. This is the my girlfriend's quilt shop green color. I wish I could find one of these that was in the um, uh, so in common aqua blue. I would love that on there. But anyway, so that is Legos. And I told you on Social Friday Live that I would have a little design for you. It's not quite finished. The design is done, but I haven't finished uh, stitching together my prototype yet. So um, it will be out Monday, it, tomorrow. It'll be out tomorrow. So it's just a little fun block, a little Lego block. That's all it is. But I, th I just wanted to do it was for fun. You know, there is something national something day every day of the year now. And I think that's a little bit silly, but I can get behind a national Lego day. Because <laughs> I love Legos like everybody else does. Alrighty, let's get going on the layout for our bento box stained glass runner. Let me bring up that screen for you. Here we go. So here it is. Now you can see that the top row is numbered one through six. So if you have used six charm packs and you've made two bento box squares from each charm pack, I want you to pick one from each of the six sets and number them. Lay them out however you want, one through six. Then your bottom row is going to be laid out four, six, five. And so by four, I mean whatever block is here in the fourth position of the top row is the first one on the second row. Whatever one is in the sixth position is the second one in the second row. And then the fifth, and then the third, the second, and the first. And why? That's so that you don't end up with top and bottom blocks being the same or side to side blocks being the same. So it's a very simple layout. If you made all of yours from one or two of the same charm packs, then just mix them and match them however you want. The idea is that you get a stained glass look like you see here. It'll be much more apparent when you see mine next week. I feel I feel so bad, but you guys, it's been such a... La this last week and this coming week are going to probably be the two busiest weeks of the first quarter of the year for us. Dave and I, I we literally... Uh, last week, this last week, did not see each other at all, except to say goodnight and to say goodbye in the morning. That's all we saw each other because we both had things that kept us at opposite ends of the town each day. And that's how it's going to be this week too. So um, that's the layout. Super simple, guys. There's nothing magical about it. I just wanted to give you that idea so that you knew not to have them touching side to side or top to bottom when you lay them out. Other than that, go wild. Have fun. If you've done 12 different charm packs and you have 12 different blocks, then you can do the ultimate moving around and doing whatever you like. Um, that's the only real idea around the stained glass part is not to have them grouped together, likes together. Alrighty. So now moving on from that to how do we create, not so much create, but how do we size quilt patterns? the finished quilting. And I, I've had a lot of people ask me this recently, and I have done previous videos on this, but I thought since we're in the process of doing this runner and doing, learning how or starting to do those things on projects that are smaller are far easier than trying to attempt a big quilt all at once. So last week we talked about measuring the bento box for making your little right route. The first week we did one just so we could quilt it and make ourselves a little mug rug and get used to how we pieced this. So I showed you how you measured between the guidelines. What we came up with was five and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. That's the size of your design. And instead of doing edge to edge quilting where everything touches and is all matched up, I want you to quilt a design in each block. It can be the same design. I'm not telling you to do different designs. I'm just saying do a quilting, a quilt hooping in each block. And that way, one, you get used to that process so that when you go to do that bigger quilt, you feel much more at ease because the process is exactly the same, exactly the same. Okay, so five and a quarter by five and a quarter. 
That's pretty specific, right? Yeah, it is. So how do you get that size from a pattern that you might already have? So bring in this lovely lady, Christine from Amelie Scott Design. She's the designer, creator, and owner, blah, 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 right? All that good stuff. She's a lovely person. You'd like her. This is her original book where the smallest pattern fit a six by 10 hoop. Well, I've created all of the blocks and stuff for the bento. You need five and a quarter by five and a quarter. These are too big, right? Can you resize them? Well, back when she originally created this, she told us all we couldn't. And I didn't, I didn't believe her. <laughs> I know why she did. And I'll tell you in a second. But I thought, surely you can, there's a way that you can resize this. So the thing that you need, well, before we, before we go on, let me tell you. The, the reason I like this original book is you get all these designs, but the one I love the most is the stipple. I probably use this design a hundred times. As is, bigger, smaller, in between, made border sizes for it. I love it. Because remember, I told you that I like my quilting to sink into the background so my piecing stands out. And when I do table runners, mug rugs, small projects, I want to get them quilted, get it done, get it on the wall, get it on the table and be done. I want it out there so people can see it, so I can see it and I can enjoy it. So a stipple for me is my favorite all-time quilting pattern ever, 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 ever. When I'm doing a big quilt and I want things more fancy and all that, I love other designs too. I love creating my own designs. I've got some um, videos here on the channel on creating my own designs in the past before I started build a quilt, but I love it. However, that is the smallest size that that stipple comes in straight from, at that time it was from a CD. Well, that's no good. That's no good when I'm talking about quilting a square that that size, right? <laughs> I need it to be five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Well, I also need it. So I need it to be this size and I need it to be this size with cross hairs. Cross hairs will help you get perfect placement because when you place it on your, um, on your top, you can bring in your needle on your machine, get it right in the center remove your template, press go, and it's going to be centered up for you. How easy is that, right? I love that. Let's, let's, let's give you one quick piece of information. When you are quilting, the finished quilting, you do not use stabilizer. Yay, no stabilizer. Your top, your batting, and your backing. That's all you need. That's all the stabilization that's required, okay? So, when you put this on there and you've got this in the hoop, let me grab my five by seven hoop here. You've got it in the hoop and it's in there and all of that. You, you want those crosshairs so that you know where the center is easily. How are you gonna do it? Well, you need software. Now I hear some of you out there. Did you know I could hear you through the camera? Yeah, I can do that. Um, you need software. And some of you are going to say, but I have software, Diana. And I'm going to say, groovy. I'm glad you've got software. But does it resize your designs? Because if it doesn't resize and recalculate, that's the important part. Then your design isn't going to turn out properly. And it's probably not going to quilt properly. And it's probably going to have longer stitches, shorter stitches. They're going to loop on you. You're going to have some problems with them. And over time, as that quilt gets used, those stitches are more likely going to come out. So you need software that recalculates for you because in the recalculization, it's doing all the, it, it's not changing the size of the stitch. It's recalculating how many stitches you need. So a company called Designs in Machine Embroidery, or DIME, I know some of you have heard of it, 
here we go. Um, they have a software called Embroidery Tool Shed. It is free and they mean completely free. They say it's $199 value. I would say they're underestimating that. I think this software is probably worth more about $250, $220 to $250. When I look at other software companies that make software that resize, you're usually paying a minimum of 220 bucks. Okay. And this software does a lot of nice things. It read and writes all your popular formats. So like all of these formats down here for whatever your extension on your machine, um, it tells you your minimum requirements. You click there, it will tell you for Mac or um, Windows, whichever. But the thing I love about this free software is it resizes your designs by recalculating the design. Yay, that's what we want it to do is to recalculate. And it's really easy when you go in, you go into software, you see it right there, embroidery tool shed. You click, this page comes up. You can read all about it. You can read all this information and you just click download software here, follow the instructions. And Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. And you've got yourself some great free software because it will help you recolor all kinds of stuff that it will do. And that's wonderful. So I am going today show you how you use that software so that you end up with a five and a quarter by five and a quarter design, any design that you wish to use. And I will tell you now, not every design is going to look good in that size. So you have to use your own eye when you resize it on your screen and you look and you say, eh, I don't really like it in that size. Then don't use it. Use something else. But something like this, easy to use. If you create your own designs in the past and you need to resize them to use them, you can use this software to recalculate and resize. Okay, so let me take you to that window. Here we go. So here we are in the tool shed. Um, and in the tool shed, um, I've already brought in my design, but what you would do is you go up to file, you go into open, you find out wherever it is on your machine, and then you bring it and you click open and it will pop it right into this screen, okay? Now over here, this box is really important guys because it tells you right here your stitch length. This has been digitized to have a stitch length of 3.1 inches. Um, I just bring it down to three inches and click apply or three millimeters and click apply. Um, that length of a stitch gives you a really nice hand stitched look. Anything smaller definitely looks machine done. Anything anything over a 3.5 millimeter length is going to be too, too, too wide, too long. So three, 3.1 as it comes up, that's fine. But here's the important part. This purple box that says transform. When you click on it, it shows you the size. And it has these two things right here, maintain aspect ratio. And that means that when I change this number here, the 5.25, it automatically changes the height to 10.29 because that is maintaining the aspect ratio so that it stays this nice rectangle. That is not what we need. So I've backed up. This is the original size. I want to unclick this. When I unclick this, this allows me to change my width to 5.25 and it left the height alone. Now I can come in here and also change the height and click apply. And now that's my new 100% ratio and you see my new design here. Now, did you see this other box that said regenerate stitches? That means recalculate your stitches. You wanna make sure that is clicked and is blue like you see there. If it's not, if it's off, it's not going to recalculate your stitches and you'll have problems. And there might be times with embroidery designs and stuff like that that you don't need to regenerate stitches, but with this, you absolutely do. You click apply, you're done. Now you have your design. Now you want to save your design. Now there's two formats that I want you to save and I want you to go to file, save as, 
And then it says resize stipple 5.25 by 5.25. That's what I've typed in. That's what I've called this design. And then here you see Inspiration Series C2S. That's Dime's software format. I want you to save it in that. I want you to click save. Now I've already saved it once there. I'm just going to click yes. I've saved it. Why? Because when you save it like that, that means that you can take that file and bring it back into the software anytime you want and manipulate it. But that is not the extension you need for your machine. Let's see how we get that. So, whoops, wrong one there. Here we go. So, in order to save it and see it on my machine and, and use it on my machine, I go back up to file again and I go to save as. And I can leave the name the same. That's cool. But down here where it says save as type, I click it. And this brings down all the types that Dime allows you to save in. They even have um, some of the, the HQ Pro series and stuff. I think those are quilting machine things. So they've got lots of stuff in here that you can save as. But you find yours. Maybe it's Janome. Uh, maybe it's uh, an Alna. Uh, mine is for Brother Baby Lock, and I like using version 6, so I save mine as that. This is not the software I use for digitizing. I use a professional software for that, but I will tell you for home domestic embroiderers and quilters, this is a great little software for these kinds of things. And then put your USB stick in wherever you put it in on your computer and then come down here. If I had a USB stick in there, you'd see it and I'd click it and I'd save this version to my USB stick because then I can take that stick to my machine and I can download this file into my machine. Okay. But before you do that, remember I said that we want it with crosshairs, right? Let's go back. So if I go up here to the print icon that says print preview, I'm going to print out a template for me to use because remember, we have to have templates when we quilt with our embroidery machine so we get that placement correct. If I go into settings, there's all these things that I can choose from. I always choose actual size. Always choose for your quilting templates crosshairs. I always choose artwork so it picks up any artwork that might be on there. I always choose realistic. And I always choose stitches because this particular design, those are stitches. That's not artwork. Those are stitches I'm seeing. And I want to see those. So if I came in here and I unclicked that and clicked OK, all I would get is the crosshairs. So because it's looking at stitches, I need to make sure that's clicked. All righty. And if you want to, you can come down here and give this a name resized um, stipple 5.25 by 5.25 and then click OK and then that's going to show up right here. All right. And then you just click your print button and you can print out your template either on regular paper or on um, uh, a peel and stick template paper. Okay. And there you have it. There you have this. And when I hold it up, look how perfectly it fits in my bento box. Let me lay it there and then hold it. Look at how perfectly it fits. <gasps> Isn't that cool? That's so easy. You guys, you get that software for free. That's incredible. Now, obviously, you're going to get it, and they're hoping to entice you to come see some of their other computer softwares and stuff. And I say go for it. They have some of the best. I truly believe Dime has some of the best computer software for home embroiderers um, on the market. And I've used three different brands of home embroidery software before I switched to the professional software that I use now for my business. Dime, hands down, was the best. Um, it was really close to another one, but the other one left little things like these crosshairs out. And that's so important when we're doing quilting and you're getting that whole software for free, for free, seriously. 
They will never ask you for money for it. You don't get part of it. And then they say, oh, but if you want to pay that $200, no, that whole software package is for free. There are others aren't. And of course, of course not. They've got to make money, right? Um, but that one is. So take advantage of it, you guys. It's a great software. You can also resize your embroidery designs if you do other embroidery and stuff with it as well. So, and it does all those other things. That is how you create and resize your designs. So you can do that. This was, <coughs> excuse me, the stipple design. Now, actually, Christine now has a pro version of this book. It's called the pro version where they give you a free copy of that tool shed. OK, um, so that you can then Christine walks you through all this math and stuff to resize. I think I think that is a little overdone. It, it's a little it, it, it's a little more sometimes than you need. I, I've always done it this way and I find it super simple to measure and then plug in my size. But she gives you all of that. So if you have to do that for like a large quilt to figure out bigger things, you've got all of that. You've got worksheets and stuff. It's a great product. I love it. I have one, and but I grabbed this one because I wanted you to see that stipple and I wanted to show you how to use that tool shed. And you can tell I've used this book for a long time. I've had this book since it came out. All righty. But if you have designs from other, other companies, you can still bring them into that software the same way and resize in the same way. So you know how much I love Kimberbell. I just showed you my little my little thing from her my girlfriend's quilt shop, which is Chris, her twin sister's business. I love Kimberbell designs. I got a whole folder of them. I do my own designs sometimes, but if I'm in a hurry or they have created one that I love, I use it for my own stuff because you know, I don't have time to do all of them myself. <laughs> and I love it. They've got a whole staff that works on that. So, you know, I let I use their brains for my projects, my personal projects sometimes. So if you've got those designs and there's not a five and a quarter by five and a quarter, and I know there will not be, there'll be something close. And that's the nice thing too. pull in a design as closest to that size as you've got. That's less manipulation that you're really doing to it. Um, so you could do Kimberbell. You could do, I know there are lots of other companies on the web on the website, on the um, internet that do quilting designs. You can use that software to resize them for your bento box or any of your other projects. Like I said, not every design that you choose will look wonderful resized. If you can use a design, how it's meant to be and the size it's meant to be, that's always probably the best. But that resizing with recalculation will help you go further. Alrighty. That is this week's Quilt Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it answered the questions that I've been getting. If you have more questions, drop them in the comment boxes, of course. Tomorrow you'll get your free Lego pattern out there. Wednesday we've got coming up Wednesday workshop for this week. Um, Friday for Social Friday Live. It's once again going to be Social Friday almost live because I have my quarterly iron infusion appointment. You guys, I've talked to you about that before. About five, four or five years ago, my body decided to stop absorbing iron the way it should. And so every quarter I go and get an iron infusion. I know other people that do that too. Um, long story, but um, it keeps me fit as a fiddle. It allows me to run and do all the things I want to do and feel better than I've ever felt in my life. But we have to drive a couple of hours from here to the medical center to get it done and see the doctor. And um, so it's like an all day thing. So I won't be able to do the live on Friday, but there will be a pre-recorded almost live. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please visit the website, subscribe over there. You'll get our blogs and all of that. And that's where all of our patterns and things are for sale. And where you can subscribe to this year's subscription for all the Quilt Lab patterns going forward, February through next January, because it's just starting on February 1st. Had a question. If they decide to subscribe at a later date, will it be prorated? No, you'll still pay the $60 for the year, but I will send you all of those patterns and things that you've missed. Okay. That's how we're going to work that. 
And um, please like and share the video with friends. We are over 300,000, over 302,000 now subscribers to this channel, which is just so astronomical to me. I, I almost get hives thinking about it. It's so much. I love having you all join me for this. Um, your comments, your questions, um, helping you with your projects privately. I love all of that. Um, and I love, and I'm thrilled that you're enjoying it. There's always room for more people to come and have fun with us. So when you share and you like, that's how we grew to be this size. And I can't thank you enough. I hope you all are having fun. It seems like you are. Um, so please um, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, click the little bell to set the notifications. I say set the one for all so you get notified of all the different things we've got going on. But if you specifically want just the Quilt Lab notifications, then you can set those things as well. Um, but who would want to miss out on anything? So, you know, click the all. But subscribe to the channel like and share the video so that others can find us as well. I appreciate that so much. If you need to contact me privately, you know you can do that at support at sewingcommon.com and I'll get back with you as soon as I possibly can, typically within an hour or so. Um, but if it's on the weekend, it might be Monday unless I can get to it prior. Um, but um, I'm happy to answer your questions or talk to you privately if you need to about anything. And until next time, what I tell you all is go so life beautiful all you beautiful quilt artists out there go and have a great week finish up your bento box stained glass runner if you're with us for wednesday workshop we'll be finishing up the um, star charm runner on wednesday i can't wait to see you then until next time so life beautiful bye for now everybody